This question is asked often, are robots going to take our jobs? This is what a factory predominantly looks like. Hundreds of thousands of factories all across the world. Whether this was 30 years ago or today, it's actually still a fairly analogous example. You have machines and people working side by side. What has happened though over the last handful of years is there is a dichotomy of behaviors happening. On one side, the fourth industrial revolution is entering, or ushering in, excuse me, a significant increase in connected machines connected products. And at the same time, the people who are standing next to these highly sophisticated machines are ultimately connected in their home lives. They carry a cell phone that's managing their smart car, their smart home, their smart systems, but they have almost no interaction with the systems at work. So think about this in our home lives. We go home, we are connected to everything, but we come back to work, we're going back to, in many cases, paper. In some cases, the companies have digitized their, their, their work, but for the most part, it's a reference tool. You, you are standing next to a machine, all of a sudden you don't know what you need to do next. You pull out your phone, you look something up, you walk across the factory floor, you log into the one or two terminals that might be in the, in the manufacturing space and you look it up. And what we find is that knowledge in this case of work generally was accumulated before you got to the job, or it's training. So it's your education, your training, but it's not necessarily highly transferable. In the modern age that we're entering into right now, we've got a increase in population, but we're also assuming that there's gonna be an increase in consumption. One of the fears, of course, is that we're going to be replaced by this insurgence of connected machines. We're also in the new normal. This is the first time in history, and will continue to be this way, I believe, that there are going to be, and there are more connected devices than people, and it's growing at a pace that is far outseating us. How does the machine world deal with that increase in population and the increase in connectivity? We have machine learning techniques. We have advanced AIs that start making sense of that data for the other systems, the other interconnections. But how do people engage with that? What I'd like to do is show you an example, and this is from our own experiences, where the application of wearable technology, augmented and assisted reality, are opening up new opportunities for the human workforce to be engaged side by side with the autonomous workforce. And to do that, I'm going to show you an example from uh, Boeing. Some people have the impression that wire harnesses are an easy build. They're not. There are literally thousands and thousands of wire, typically in a manned craft or a commercial airliner. When we first started this program, we had paper. All the routing instructions came printed out on a big phone book, and the employee had to use a ruler to keep their place, look up, look down, look back, etc. Then we kind of went away from that. We started pulling up our information on the laptops but looking at the laptop on a constant basis. Your eyes are adjusting constantly. So by the end of the day, you've got a raging headache. You have to stop what you're doing, go to the keyboard. You know, you're always kind of looking back and forth. You do kind of lose your train of thought at times. You're like, oh, did I really just see what I saw? And you have to type it up again. We have anywhere from three wires, four wires, to 90, 100 wires to go into one connector. So every little bit of technology really does help. Start wire bundle, scan order. We look for the big changers. Wearables, as an example, is what we would call a step function change. Rather than picking up seconds or minutes, step function change gives us an opportunity to cut the build time by 25%. Okay, Skylight, local search, 0550. We realized we had voice command. And that was huge. You know, you have two hands on the product the whole time. You don't have to take anything off. Once you put them on, you'll say, Skylight. It'll show you on the diagram, and then you'll take the wire, and you'll just pop it in fast as heck. One example of many that we're seeing right now, um, the average customer we work with or other people in our industry work with, we see dozens and dozens of use cases. General Electric, for instance, has over 100 use cases where wearable technology they believe can transform the business. And this is measured from an economic standpoint on an incredible scale. Forrester Research's J.P. Gowner estimates that by 2020, up to 14 million American uh, workers will have smart glasses aiding in their manufacturing, field service, and logistics operations. And across the globe, roughly 50% of the developed world has what we consider an unconnected deskless workforce, that their only disadvantage against uh, robots in this case is uh, access to information. So we see in, in, in the manufacturing world, it's complex access to information. Could you get it? Could you see it in real time? Could you remove that barrier to, to knowledge? In shipping, 
and logistics. DHL is uh, showing experience where they're getting between 15 and 20 percent improvement on the average pick and pack time. And again, the scale of this from a world economic standpoint, SAP alone runs 700,000 warehouses around the world. And one of the things I think I found uh, most exciting about where this, this future pretends, speaking with uh, leaders at Agco recently, and they were experimenting with wearable technology, and this part really kind of gave me an aha moment. They put smart glasses on users who had never built one of their tractors before and raced them against the people who had been doing it for years, and every time they beat the pro just by having real-time access to information. It could be as simple as what's the torque value on the bolt I'm about to put on or where does this part go? But you're able to remove confusion. You're able to remove the uncertainties and that cognitive load is actually the biggest challenge in our workforce. So what we think, and this is I think the, the part that's exciting if, you, if you've been worried about the uh, rise of the robots, I think we have a very important part to play in a harmony of man with machine. It's not about us having no future. It's about removing a barrier. It's about having access to information. And then it's in the ability to remove frustration from their workforce, enable them and empower them, and in turn unlocks an amazing amount of latent value that exists in the human workforce today. So I believe that we'll be competitive for many, many years to come.